Hi, welcome to Remember This. I'm your host, Denise Bolin. My guest today has had a wonderful and successful music career for five decades. He has recorded a total of 13 studio albums and has charted more than 20 singles on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart. He has had multiple number one hits in country, gospel, and blues. Everybody, please welcome legendary country music singer, T. Graham Brown. Hi, T. Graham. How are you? I'm so blessed to have you here. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. You know, I was listening to you introduce me and it said, you said legendary. One time I was talking to Merle Haggard and I, I called him a legend, I guess, something like that. And he said, Brown, you know, the only qualification for a legend is just to live long enough. So I guess I'm, I guess I'm getting old. No, no, you're not getting older. You're getting better because you, you, you're, you're still you're still working. You're still performing. So you're just getting better and better. Thank you. I want to ask you, I don't know if anyone asked you before, but what is the T for? Is it Tony, Anthony? I've been asked about a gazillion times, but oh, okay. I, don't, I don't mind answering it. My name's Anthony Graham Brown and they call me Tony uh, growing up. And then uh, before I was living in Athens, Georgia. And before I left Athens, I started calling myself T. Graham Brown. Then when I moved to Nashville, I went back to Tony Brown. And there's a very famous uh, producer and piano player. He played for Elvis and he's a great session musician and really, really famous guy and, and you know, in music. So I didn't know anything about anything when I first moved to Nashville in 1982. So I just uh, found out who the president of uh, RCA Records was. And I called RCA Records and asked for that person. And they said, who's calling? And I said, Tony Brown. And they put me right through. And the guy picked up the phone and said, Tony, I'm glad you called, man. Dang, is that me? I'm glad you called, man. Um, I wow. want you to call. I want you to come in and play a session for me. And I said, no, this isn't that Tony Brown. This is Tony Brown, <laughs> from Georgia. And they hung up on me. So oh, no. <laughs> I went back to T. Graham. But it's short for Tony. Yeah, I, my name is Tony. And I went to T. Graham. They call me T for short. So I love it because it's very original. There's no other T. Graham out there. So that's that's wonderful. But there's T.G. Shepard out there, and they call me T.G. Shepard about half the time, so <laughs> I, I can't win on this name thing. Right, right, right. And I, I just interviewed his wife, Kelly, the other day. So I was like, okay, T.G., yep, I don't want to mess up T. T. Graham. Yep, it's a little tongue twister there. <laughs> they call me T.G., T.J., T. Graham, T. Graham Bell, T. Graham Nash. They, 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 they keep going. Anything with three names, too. They they call me Earl Thomas Conley. There's a guy named Earl Thomas Conley. And he's passed away, and they still call me. Oh, no. <laughs> well, no matter what they call you, as long as they're calling you, right? <laughs> exactly. Don't so, call me. Don't call me. <laughs> exactly. So you were born in Georgia. Yes. You married your wife, Sheila, in 1980. I did. Nashville in 1982. So can you take us back how you got started in the music industry? Wow. Well, I, my family is from uh, the next county over from Athens, Georgia. And my father, had, both sides of my family are farmers. And my folks uh, grew up on dirt roads, really poor people. And we got this little farm been in our family for seven generations and we're still holding on to it. My brother and I, we don't farm it anymore uh, because Atlanta's growing and growing, growing out there. So it's basically suburbs now, but anyway, um, my father moved us down to South Georgia and opened up a grain elevator and we stayed down there for nine years. And then we moved back to Athens and I finished high school there and, uh, went to the University of Georgia, where I met Sheila. And I was trying to play baseball for Georgia and I wasn't getting to play. So I had a friend from high school that worked at the local Holiday Inn. And he said, you know, uh, they have a, a lounge upstairs and maybe y'all could, I had a buddy named Dirk and we would sing at 
our little high school things. And he said, maybe I'll could come over there and audition. And so we went over there one afternoon and played the guy at the Holiday Inn a few songs. He said, you're hired. And we didn't know what to do. We didn't know, you know, all of a sudden we were in show business. So I went back to uh, baseball practice that afternoon and I told my coach, I said, coach, man, all I've ever wanted to do is play baseball, but I'm not getting to play. And I went over and sang at the Holiday Inn this afternoon and they offered me $150 a week to sing over there. What do you think I should do? And he he was a grandfatherly guy and he put his hand on my shoulder and he looked it in my eyes, you know, and he said, Tony, if I was you, I would go sing. So that was the beginning of my singing career and the end of my baseball career. And that was the fall of 1973. And we sang there at the Holiday Inn for three years. And then I put together a country rock band for three years. And then I put together just a straight soul band for three years. And then in 1982, uh, we moved it. Sheila finished up her master's work. She's got a couple of master's degrees. She was going to go to vet school. Nice. She has a master's degree in dairy science and a master's degree in uh, nutrition and was admitted to vet school and accepted and all that. But she came home to the farm. We were living on the farm about 20 miles from the university. And uh, she said, you know, I think we ought to move to Nashville. And I said, well, what about vet school? And she said, well, we can all, I can always come back and go to vet school. She said, if we don't move to Nashville, you're going to be second guessing yourself the rest of your life. So mm -hmm. we picked up and moved to Nashville and she took a job at a department store during the day and waiting on tables at night. And I started singing songwriter demos for publishing companies at $20 a song. And that first six months we were in Nashville I only made $900 so it was great that Sheila was working and then it just got better from then on she sounds like a wonderful woman god she's, bless her she's my best friend we've been together 43 years now and oh that's wonderful I can count on her you know she's my hero she's my best friend she's got my back and she you know takes up for me every time she needs to. She's she's great, and she loved me through all my drug and alcohol problems, and never left. I gave her every reason in the book to leave, but she stuck around. And when I finally got sober, about eleven years ago, something like that. I'm sixty-seven, so I mean, I kept up my abusive behavior. I never was mean to her or anything, but. I asked her why she stayed and she said, well, I just knew you were going to finally figure it out. Oh. And so oh. I did. And it's all better now. Everything's beautiful. Thank God. I, I, I actually went through that. I married my childhood sweetheart and uh, Irishman and, you know, uh, the whole family drank. And so he, he drank and it was very, it was very tough. It was very tough, you know, on the home and the kids and, um, Towards, uh, he has passed away since, but towards the end of his life, he was diagnosed with uh, bipolar. And so, they well, that's, that's why he was drinking. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I was. My mom told me I couldn't sit still. And so finally, Sheila saw a psychiatrist, a world-renowned psychiatrist based in Nashville. And, and she, he was on a local news show and he, he said that uh, bipolar and alcoholism are, are, you know, very often the bipolar causes it because you're trying to self-medicate, you're trying to make yes. yourself normal. And he said it's a family disease. And when Sheila heard that, she called up. We, she was on a, we were on a waiting list for about six months, but he's turned out to be a great friend. He's a grandfatherly kind of guy too. And so my, my bipolar symptoms are uh, pretty much uh, under control. I have to, you know, I get off every now and then I'll get weird. And if we need to adjust my medicine or change my medicine, he you know, he's a pharmacological psychiatrist. He has a doctorate in pharmacology, which is drugs and their interaction. And he's also has a doctorate in uh, psychiatry. So he's just an expert at finding the right drug or if he has to put 
two drugs together and he knows how much of each drug to put. He's a, a you know, a scientist and a, a psychiatrist. Plus he's a great guy. Yeah. And, and it's so important that you do go and find out and, and see if, if you have this, you know, it's important. There's nothing to be ashamed of, you know, to go. Oh, to you, know what? you know, Denise, I, every show that I do, I wind up with a song I wrote called Wine Into Water, which is just a prayer uh, to get sober. But I always tell people, see, I have a bully pulpit. I can say what I want to up there. And I always tell people about my bipolar and tell them that if they have a mental, I said, I'm mentally ill and, and I don't mind talking about it. I said, it still has a stigma attached to it. And I say, men in particular, don't want to admit it and I tell people I said you don't have to live like that because they make medicine now that can control the symptoms so by all means find a good doctor and, and go get checked out because you just don't have to live that way yeah I don't know if you know the actress uh, Patty Duke at it yeah I love and, Patty Duke and love and you know Naomi Judd uh and Winona are great friends of ours. I mean, I've been knowing them since the eighties. I used to tour with the Judds and, and Naomi was, was bipolar and, but she was uh, drug resistant. They couldn't find any drugs to control her symptoms. And, and that's why she shot herself. She just oh, got, so bad. you know, got depressed. I mean, they were going in the country music hall of fame the next day. I and, know. Oh my Lord. <laughs> That's so tragic. Naomi was a really sweet woman. And, uh, but hey, man, this mental illness is no respect or a person. You know? That's it's, right. Are you in touch with the daughters? How are they doing? Yeah, I, I'm doing a, a new album, a soul album. I'm finishing up right now. And uh, Winona sang a duet with me on it a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, I know them very well. That's wonderful. I went on CNN they wanted me to come on and talk about, you know, being bipolar. Uh, it was right after Naomi, you know, like a day after. And so the first oh. question, the first question the lady asked me was, uh, do you have any idea what she was going through? I said, Hey, I know exactly what she was going through because I got the same thing. And so I went on to, you know, kind of give my testimony about mental illness. I feel this incumbent on me to talk about, uh, uh, drug abuse, you know, alcohol abuse, and mental illness. But I think, you know, I'm a singer, and that's how I make my living. But Sheila and I, we figure our main job is to help people get sober and stay sober. That's our little personal little ministry, you know, is, is helping people. And that, and that's so important. That is, that, that's that's wonderful that you're doing Plus, that. Plus Some people don't know where to turn for help. And, and like, like we were saying, before, our, they're embarrassed. So, yeah. And it's our great pleasure to do it. You know, we serve an awesome God and it's an honor to be able to serve God. And That's we're right. just uh, trying to do what we think God wants us to do. You know, I, I'm not a mind reader. I can't read God's mind, but I, we just do what we think he wants us to do. And usually that turns out to be the right thing. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he opens doors and he closes doors. So if he's leading you in a direction, then that's the way to go, definitely. Now, did you ever uh, think of writing a song about it or even maybe coming out with your life story, a book? Golly, it's funny you should ask. Well, I wrote Wine in the Water and it's helped so many people get sober. Hey, go to go to YouTube sometime and, and look up T. Graham Brown, Wine in the Water and and check out the first video that pops up. It's had like 5 million views and all it is is a sobriety video. It's about uh, people, we're writing a book about just the stories that we've heard about wine and the water. It's the, the, the hook is once upon a time you turn the uh, water into wine. Now I'm on my knees begging father, please help me turn the wine back into water. That's the hook of the song. And so it's basically a prayer to, mm -hmm. for sobriety and uh as far as the book goes i uh, a publisher got in touch with us about a year ago and, and we're finishing up an autobiography right now we're, we're planning on turning it in 
in the next, it, by the end of September. Wow, that's wonderful. And it's really fun. It's really funny. Awesome. And, and it's funny and interesting. And Great I tell stories. a lot of stories. And, you know, it's an all yeah. about, about my crazy self. I love it. Oh, I can't wait for it to come out. Do you have a contact, uh, I don't know, the head chapter of uh, AA? They that use it song. all the time. Do they? AA, AA uses it all the time. It's, it's, it's played in just about every rehab place in the United States and around the world. And uh, it's uh, sung in churches. And it's funny, man. It's kind of like a hymn. I went to speak at a church the other day and they started singing wine in the water and everybody stood up and sang along with it. And they knew the words to it. It, was, it blew my mind. It's a beautiful song and, and a song that can change your life. It's so much more meaningful than just an average. You know, I, I had a lady wrote me and uh, said her husband had beaten her up again. And she went out on a lonely road at night and was going to shoot herself and turn the radio on and bam, wine in the water came on. And she changed her mind. This guy, this big football player came up to me at the Tampa State Fair and said that uh, he had started smoking crack and he lost his job. He had a wife and three daughters and they left him. He lost his house and he pulled his truck on New Year's Day, he pulled his truck out into a field and ran a hose from the exhaust into the cab and um, was sitting there breathing it in. He said, I turned the radio on and bam, wine in the water came on right that second. And he wow. changed his mind. Uh, a couple, uh, we were out in LA for the Grammys and somehow this uh, couple that was in their seventies got in touch with us and wrote this long letter about their son was 40 years old and he helped them out, you know, helped, helped buy groceries for them, cut their grass, things like that. And he had a heart attack while he was cutting their grass and fell over dead. And they were, they made a suicide pact and they turned on the radio. They were about to kill themselves and they turned the radio on and bam, wine in the water came on. They changed their mind. They just wanted to thank me for the song. And I hear so many stories like that. It's so funny how God works. You, you know, you never know what God's got up his sleeve and that's a, a really a good part about it he's very clever isn't he and i don't believe in coincidence either so no no i don't think there's any coincidences i used to but i don't anymore yeah well i want to say i love your raspy voice and ah. uh, i do i do and it sounds very familiar and i'm sure people will think it sounds familiar because you've done a lot of jingles for commercials i oh. want to i want to play one if it's okay with you yeah what you got Okay, let's see here. Huh? Let me share my screen. Okay. Does this look familiar? Well, if you're sharing your screen, it's got to be Taco Bell. It's Taco Bell. <laughs> there you go. Look at you. Oh, man. I was young. Yeah, we all were young. That was probably in 1990, 91, something like that. Yeah. I was a Taco Bell guy, baby. I sang the yeah. jingle and I was on camera for four years. People got sick of seeing me. I, <laughs> people, people changed the channel on me so many times and didn't realize it. <laughs> it's a classic. This is great. I, mean, golly, I remember I mean, this commercial too. Well, I did, did them for four years, so I don't know how many of them I, I did. I did, you know, a couple of dozen of them. I think they only have two or three on, on YouTube, but yeah. I, did, I did them a lot, a lot. We I'd go out to Hollywood, and then we'd go out into the desert, Joshua Tree National Monument. That's where that's filmed, and um, gosh, we did a ton of them, and, okay. and I'm still doing jingles. You know it. I've done, it's so funny. I did, uh, sometimes you feel like a nut. Yes, sometimes you did. You and I wish they had that on YouTube. <laughs> I did that for seven years. and I love but it. But I've done, golly, you know. I'm going to play this one and then you tell me, because I got you in a little window there. Okay. And I want to bring you back, okay? So I'm right. going to bring back a little memory here for you. Here you go. How long has it been since you had something good? I mean, something delicious, something dynamite. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. 
was funny, man. Oh, good Lord. They had me. Remember in- that day watching it? Does it yeah, bring back they, they, the they day? Had me, they had me playing piano on a train one time on a train car. Oh. They had me, they built a piano hot rod car. It was a white grand piano with, with candelabras on it, like uh, Liberace. And I was driving that thing down the road, playing it at the same time. They put me on a biplane one time. <laughs> The one called Wing Walker, and I actually went up a mile high and was doing all these barrel rolls and all kinds of stuff. It was a blast that day. You were a stunt man. <laughs> I actually was. I showed up for the shoot that morning, and there were five stunt men dressed exactly like I was dressed, and they were going to do it. And I said, "Ain't no way, man. I'm going to at least try." And I went up there and stayed up there thirty minutes, and I did it. And when we landed, they just came running up to me and gave me a big bear head and they said man you are in the club so that, that, that is I, awesome i'm a sucker for a cheap thrill so <laughs> and 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 you did um enjoy which is one of my favorite it still rings in my head sometimes can can you sing it <laughs> well it's just sometimes you feel like a nut sometimes you don't i'm oh, joy's got nuts mounds don't you know you I heard love it, it. In time. i love it and, uh, and Dr. Pepper and 7-Up and Mountain Dew and Coca-Cola and Budweiser and Strohs and Miller and Coors and every car and truck and Hardee's and McDonald's and wow. AFC and Taco Bell and on and on and on. It's, awesome. it's a really good, it was a really good side hustle. I'm sure. And get nice uh, residual checks in the mail, right? Um, that's always nice. That's always nice. I had so many jingles run. I had yeah. so many jingles running one time. I went to the mailbox and I had eleven checks in the mailbox in one day. So that was a that was a record for me. Yeah, that's awesome. So, okay, so singer, songwriter. How many songs did you write about? Oh, I don't know. Probably three or four hundred. I was never the greatest songwriter in the world. Well, I wrote for me. I didn't never. Tr- I wrote for a company called uh, EMI, and it's recently been bought by Sony. That's where my catalog is. They, they're the ones that own the copyrights to my songs. But mainly, I wrote for me. I mean, I had a few cuts, you know, but I never pitched my songs really. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I I wrote a lot, but I haven't really had any hits i don't guess by other artists but i've had you know my share of cuts but i don't think i've ever even had a single as a writer on another artist well never say never <laughs> oh yeah now, now i did a song called never say never that was the oh, same there you go <laughs> well who is it was it i want to get this right i think it was bob dylan got a first number one hit during the pandemic Oh, yeah, well. You hear that? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Um, yeah, Dylan's was. great, man. I love Bob Dylan is a a great one to emulate when when it's song right. Yeah. And and you you showcase artists on your uh, uh, Sirius XM radio show, Live Wire, by playing them live. You play yeah. live cuts? Well, yeah, well, next month will be three years I've been doing this. So you hear my grandfather clock chiming in the back. Is that what that is? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds uh, nice. But I, it's, you know, I tried to get them to let me do this show for two or three years. You know, I had to work on them. And then they finally said, okay, I think they got tired of me bugging them. And, uh, <laughs> so what I do is call Livewire and I do one a month and they air it 10 times during the month at different days, different times. So people can hear it. And if you subscribe to Sirius XM, they have a free mobile app that you can download and listen to their Sirius XM on your phone or your tablet or whatever, Alexa or any of that kind of stuff. And when you get that Sirius XM app, they have a huge on demand library you know, podcasts, any, oh, they have, they have so much programming. It's just unbelievable, but they have 
uh, live wire in their uh, on demand. So if you wanted, if you're a subscriber to SiriusXM, you can basically listen to back episodes of it anytime you want to. But I I play, uh, I have featured six artists on each show. I usually play. It's like going from concert to concert. I might play Merle Haggard live at Anaheim Stadium and play a couple from that. And I always tell the date and the year that the concert was recorded so that people can go in their mind, in their mind's eye, especially if they're riding down the road, they can just go like, I might play Asleep at the Wheel live at Billy Bob's, or I might play junior brown live at the continental club in austin or i just hop around to all these different concerts so that people get the experience of you know going from concert to concert then i always feature uh one artist that i talk to live every time and you know they're always country artists and and they're usually you know they're friends of mine. i know everybody so basically all i gotta do is pick up the phone and but plus, people like the exposure. You know, they get a exposure. They can talk about their latest projects or whatever. And then I always end the show with maybe an act that would have been considered country if they had come out today, like Bachman Turner Overdrive or America or wow. Greg Allman or yeah. Bob Seeger. I'm featuring on this this month. So I always kind of come up with a wild card to to end the show with so it's really cool man i get a lot of requests they got a facebook page it's on the prime country channel which airs country music from the year 1980 through 2000 so it's a 20-year window and i try to keep it within that window and it's a it's a lot of fun during covid i started doing them from here at the house and it was real easy but now i've been going down to their studios which are located in the bridgestone arena down on lower broadway right in the middle of all the tourists the hall the honky tonks and there's a glass there it's encased in glass so you can be doing the show there and look out and see lower broadway it's a really they have a cool they have a uh, cool studios and they also built a theater there and they call it the Music City Theater, and they have artists come in to that and do acoustic shows. It's about a hundred seats, and so that it's that's really good. And I access some of those concerts too. Yeah, I have never been to Tennessee, but everybody that uh, that I know that visits or even lives there loves it. They wouldn't want to live anywhere else. They just love it. Oh, my word, you need to come. This is an awesome place. Yes, I plan on it's on my bucket list. Yes. Nash- Nashville's a great town. Plus, you know, you got the Tennessee Titans, you got professional hockey, the Predators, you got a professional soccer team, you got Triple A b- uh, baseball, you got all kinds of music and and theater and symphony. There's a killer symphony in Nashville and there's all kinds of stuff do you know the country music hall of fame grand Ole opry i'm doing the grand Ole opry tonight are you oh how exciting yeah so I've now would that go on youtube when you do performances does it no, do you have, do you have your own channel your own platform the, well the grand Ole opry occasionally broadcasts i've done the grand Ole opry 400 times in my career but yeah we have a youtube channel that we're trying to get programming on we, we it hadn't been up long I have a great guy named Austin Smith that does all our socials and he's uh, working on the YouTube channel. So we're trying to build it up too. Nice. Well, as you can see from, uh, you were asking about my dresser before, I, I'm from Brooklyn and um, I heard you collaborated with Lil Anthony from Lil Anthony and the Imperials. Wow. You also know, from Brooklyn. <laughs> Lil Anthony, what a sweet man. You know, he's 83 years old. He's living down in Boca Raton, Florida now. So I flew down there and we rented a studio in Fort Lauderdale called the Power Station. Actually, there's a power station in uh, New York City, too. And we recorded him down there. I got uh, Sam Moore from Sam and Dave. I don't know if you ever heard of that duo from the 60s. So and. I got him. I recorded him at Criteria down in Miami. Winona's on it. Tanya Tucker's on it. 
Dwight Yoakam's on it. Sammy Hagar's on it. Um, a guy named Eddie Floyd that had a song called Knock on Wood. But it's all 60s soul songs. I went in down, it's called From Memphis to Muscle Shoals, and I cut uh, 13 soul songs that were either originally cut in Memphis or Muscle Shoals, Alabama, which had so many hits cut down there. And I, I just called up some friends. It did start out to be a duet album. I, I think I wanted Tanya on it. And then I just started calling a few people. And there's a guy named Randy Hauser that's a country star these days. And I got him to sing Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. But he's the only nice. current you know country star on there oh i got a lady named betty levette i don't know if you've ever heard of her she's up there and you she cut her part in new york city and uh she's an old soul singer from she's probably 75 or six and uh, she's from detroit she grew up with aretha franklin but she lives in new jersey and she just went over to new york and did her part but you know, like Sam Moore from Sam and Dave's 87, and he sings like he's 20. And then Eddie Floyd's 84. Little Anthony's 83. Betty okay. LeVette's 75. And Sammy Hagar, I bet, 75. And, and you know, these guys are – we don't call ourselves old. They, they, they came up with a great name for us. They call us legacy artists. And that sounds more – that sounds better than has been. Yes. Well, you definitely not has been. We we just had uh, Dion from Dion and the Belmonts come to See, uh, I wanted, Island. I wanted to, get, I wanted to get Dion's one of my <gasps> favorite. He's a raspy singer. He's a great singer. Yes. Gosh, I should have called. I'll get him on volume two. Oh, yeah, you have to. He He's 83 and he, oh my God, what a show I, he I put know. on. And you know who else is singing great is Felix Cavalieri from the Rascals. He's, um, I don't know if you remember him. I, yes. Yes. But I think he's originally from up there, but he lives in Nashville now. Bunch of, bunch of old rock and roll stars live in Nashville. Now. Yes. Yes, they do. How about, um, I, I just had on uh, for the 50th anniversary of American Pie, uh, Mr. Don McLean. Oh, he's a great friend of mine. We have the same manager. Look at that. I did not know yeah. that. Hey, how about that documentary they just came out with where he explains the meaning of the song? That's good. I love it. And I'm going to share this with you. Um, so during the interview, actually, just before we were closing, I said, I have one quick question for you. I said, this always bothered me. I said, the name of the song is American Pie, but you sing Miss American Pie. Is that a play on Miss America? And he said, yes. He said, look at that. You found something I didn't put in the documentary, he said. So I always you're wanted very, to know that. <laughs> hey, Denise, you're yes. very. What's that? You're very bright. Actually, my brother came up with that, but I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what do you think he means by Miss? He goes, maybe Miss America. <laughs> Yeah, Don, Don's, uh, gosh, what a genius. Isn't he? Totally I, did a, I did a benefit with him the other night, and he's singing great. He's so sweet to me. Yes, he, he's wonderful. And I just went to go see him uh, in Pennsylvania. He was performing. Yeah. How long ago? Uh, I want to say two weeks ago. He oh, was in good. Glenside. Yeah. Yeah, some of my best friends are in his band. One guy I went to high school with in Athens, Georgia, is in his band. Yeah. Okay. So my maiden name is Migliori, and he's got Tony Migliori, his keyboardist. Yeah. 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 I don't know Tony personally, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And I know he's been with him forever. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you guys, you never collaborated, right? Did you ever do a song together? No, but you know, you should. For, volume, for volume two, he would be a great. That would be awesome. Did you ever do American Pie? Did you ever never, cover that? Cause, never, because I couldn't remember all the words. To it. <laughs> That's the best answer I've heard. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> hey, I can, my mind can only hold so many songs. It's and it's true. like, it's like if I learn a new song, it pushes one out. So, right. One I, have, I have a limited number of songs I can remember. 
That's great. Well, you are, you are amazing. You, 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 you've done it all. I think you're even in a movie or two, right? Is that true? You in like, yeah, we, had a, we had a movie come out a couple of months. Well, in February, it was a Western called the, uh, desperate riders. I'm in it with Trace Atkins and, um, you know, Tanya just is starting a Christmas movie on the 15th and they might get me in it. They said, and then I, I've been, I don't know. I've been in five or six movies, you know, I, I, Hey, you know what? At this point in my life, I'm not out there chasing a hit. Um, everything's really relaxed. I get to do what I want to do. Nobody tells me what to do. If a show comes in and we want to do it, we take it. If not, we pass on it. I got the Sirius XM show. I'll write a song every now and then. I get to make the kind of albums I want to make. I miss having a blast, man. I'm having more fun now than I ever had when I was having number one songs. Look at that. You're living your best life ever. God is good. Yes. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? God is wonderful. Wonderful. And you, you've God, done a God, gospel the album. Love, the What's love that? Of- well, the love of God Almighty and his son, Jesus, and the love of my wife, Sheila, is why I'm even sitting here, because I should be dead as a hammer. I should have been faced down in a ditch a long time ago, but thank God they were. Sheila was able to pray me through it, and because and, uh, I'm telling you, I was just that close to uh, crashing and burning for good. Wow. wow. Hey, I was getting up morning. I was getting up in the morning, pouring vodka in my coffee before I brushed my teeth, firing up a joint. If there was a pill there, I'd take it. I mean, I was in bad shape. I was really, it was, it was pitiful. And I looked in the mirror one more. This is as corny a story as you've ever heard. It's a cliche of a story, but I looked in the mirror one morning and I looked like death and I asked God to help me out. And I think for the first time I was sincere about it. And I used to think about wh- where I was going to get my next drink or pill or high 24 seven. If I was awake, I was trying to figure out how I was going to get a buzz. And I went from thinking about it all the time to never thinking about it. It was like, it was taken away from me that instant. Yeah. And I haven't, it, it just doesn't cross my mind anymore. Yeah. The Lord is amazing. And that's hey, you know what you Denise, take the I desire got- away. Yes. I got peace of mind. I never knew what peace of mind is. And now I got it. Uh, the Holy, the Holy ghost, peace of mind. It's, it's amazing. It's God. And, and, and it's out there for the asking. I was just going to say that God could do it for anybody. Yes. Just ask. That's it. Praise God. And you came I, out with your first gospel album. You got a Grammy nomination. So how about that? Close your eyes and visualize that big spring, the moment when I met you from the start down in my heart. I knew for sure I never would forget you Now I see what I used to be Oh, I'll never be again Oh, I remain forever changed Touch my hand and life began as I stood there staring at an angel. Time stood still when you revealed that tender smile to a perfect stranger. I see what I used to.
just like a rock Standing strong and steady For what it's worth When I leave this earth Oh, because of you I know I will be ready Now I see what I used to be What I'll never be again Oh, I remain forever changed So you play gospel, you, you do it all. It's well, I started out singing in the church when I was a little boy, you know. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, that was the first gospel album I did. I've done all kinds of albums. You said 13. I think I'm actually working on set. This is the 17th one, but oh wow. That's neither really here nor there, but no. I've I've cut all different styles of music and I've but, Thank God I've been successful in every field of music and everything I've done has turned out good or well, rather. Yeah. I have to use correct grammar. <laughs> Not with me, you don't. I'm from New yeah, York. I went, I you went, know how we talk. I went to the Forget University about it. of Georgia. I went to the University of Georgia, but it didn't help much. You know? <laughs> uh, well, you've got an amazing career and a wonderful life. God bless you. And now, and now you're helping the victims in, in East Kentucky because of the flooding. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, you know, I saw the news. I've been to tornado aftermath, hurricanes, all of that. And I thought, man, we need to, uh, my manager is from Kentucky. So, he said, man, we ought to get a T-shirt made up and sell them on the website and donate the money to the flood relief. And I said, yeah, that's a good idea. So the colors of the University of Kentucky is, is blue and white. So he said, we'll get Kentucky blue and we'll write uh, Come Hell or High Water. That was my first number one song, Hell and High Water. So we'll put that on there and then an outline of the state of Kentucky and then Kentucky strong hashtag Kentucky strong on the bottom. So, you know, I called up Billy Ray Cyrus and there's a lot of people from Kentucky, Dwight Yoakam, the Judds, Loretta Lynn, her sister, Crystal Gale. Uh, there's a band called Exile, uh, Ricky Skaggs and <clears throat> all these people. So I called them up and I asked Billy Ray's got, a few million followers as does Dwight and all these people have a huge amount of followers. So I said, can you just put a, a, a link on your, all your social? So they did. And I asked them to, to, you know, steer them to tgrambrown.com and then share our uh, post on it. So man, we went from selling a couple of shirts to selling, they, I mean, we're selling, sending them out all over the world. We're about to top a hundred thousand bucks at $25 a pop and it's still growing. It shows no signs right. of letting up. So it's just been crazy and crazy good. good. And then, so I loaded the bus up in a, in a big uh, trailer that we pulled behind the bus with stuff. And we actually went to the place. So I got in a car and rode around all these backwoods hollers that got flooded out where, where people mainly live in mobile homes. And now all that's left is a concrete slab. And I toured this place and I mean, debris was in the tops of trees. Oh. That's how deep the water was. And it, it hit it at two in the morning. So it just washed people away and it washed their homes away. There's still a couple of hundred people missing. And, and there's been like 40 something, you know, the bodies that they found, but there's still so many people that they don't know where they are. And it's just horrible. And I, I would stop at 
some of the houses that were standing, people shoveling out mud and all this. And I stopped and would talk to them and they would invite me in their house to see how horrible it was. And so it's nothing like you see on television. It's no. so it's hundreds of times worse than that. It's your worst nightmare. Like for instance, there was a couple that had three small children and the water was rushing by. They tied them all of them together with an extension cord to hold all five of them together. The extension cord broke. The three kids washed away and died and the couple committed suicide the next day. They oh, didn't. no. So there's stories like that all over the place. And, this, and these people live in extreme po poverty to start with. They don't have much to start with. And then a guy came on the bus at the, they're using this gymnasium at the junior high school, uh, the elementary school to uh, store all the, the donations, you know, the clothes, diapers, all that stuff. And this guy got on the bus and, and he was a big veteran, you know, he's probably in his forties and uh, great shape and all that. And he was crying like a baby. And I said, what do y'all need here? He said, we just want to take a shower. That's, I mean, these people are walking around dirty and they want something as simple as a shower, but the water's mm -hmm. off, the power's off. I mean, you know, imagine that. Imagine uh, not having toilet paper, going to the bathroom and not having toilet paper or not even have a bathroom to go to. Mm -hmm. I, I talked to one guy, all he had was, he had a pair of cut off blue jeans he didn't have a shirt. He didn't have any shoes. I mean, these people got wiped out in the middle of the night. I mean, imagine that. Well, I'm glad you're bringing this up because I'm here in New York and I didn't even know about it and, until I found out that you were involved with this. You know, back in 2012, we we were hit by Hurricane Sandy. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, oh, that, that was that was god awful too. Oh gosh. So we lost a lot of people drowned in their homes. I just, and, and you were talking about the children, this what mother was trying to escape with her two kids and they got washed into the ocean. It was just horrible things yeah, happening. Well, we lost, we lost like not, we had like our whole basement was filled with water to the top. So we lost everything in the basement. We lost five cars between all the family wow. members. Well, yeah. you know, so thank God we were okay. Sandy was as bad as I've ever seen. Yeah, it was pretty you know, bad. It, it, I mean, Katrina and all the boys, Sandy was just unreal and the boardwalk and all that. Oh, yeah. But I think, haven't they pretty much gotten back to normal now? We are. We are. I mean, thank God. I mean, we have never get over it. right away. I What's know that? you never get over it. You, you know, you never get over it, and especially psychologically. You know, Psychological, know. yeah. I mean, my my mail, my mail lady, mail carrier, um, she told her mom, now in my area, there's a lot of, this used to be a vacation spot. For, for, first, they built all these bungalows. I'm in a beach area on Staten Island and they built all these bungalows for the seamen when they would come into port. So they would have to, a place to stay. Then it was like a vacation spot. So bungalows are just one floor, no basement. So because the waters came in almost up to 30 feet tall waves, the bungalows just filled to the top and people trapped in their homes couldn't get out. So my mail carrier, um, she, when they saw the water rushing in, nobody could anticipate how bad it was going to be, but she says, let me go move the car up a few blocks up. When she came back, her mother had drowned. I mean, and I can just tell you more stories, just horrible things about how people lost their lives. And, um, you know, well, it'll just, it'll just yeah. suck your heart out. You know, yeah, I got to, you know, when I was riding around looking at all this stuff, I, I just got to where I couldn't look at it, at it anymore. It made me sick to my stomach. Yeah. I, I likened it to an episode of MASH because all the streets had rubble and, and, and gray, gray dirt and mud and just everything was covered in like gray mud and, you know, but the, the best part about it, not that there is really a good part about it, but to see everyone come together we yeah. had a generator, so we had we put the generator out in the in the driveway, and all our neighbors were plugging in, and they were able to get some heat in their homes or a heated blanket. Yeah. And people you came know, from all states helping us. We had a gas shortage; they were bringing us gas. It was just amazing. Yeah, well, you know, we donated a lot of generators, and what they what they did is we 
we gave them to the fire department and the fire department, they were very clever because they, they thought this up just right as we were standing there. Uh, one of the guys, uh, the p chief of police actually said, why don't we make it like a library where you can sign these generators out and then people bring them back when they're finished with them and then somebody else can use them. I thought, boy, what a brilliant idea. So those generators are about a thousand bucks a piece. So, I mean, we're going to, I wonder, I, I'm just wondering how much we're going to be able to give those people. I mean, we're, I know I got a check for a thousand dollars from a, a guy I know that lives in Memphis and he just wanted to help, you, you know, mm -hmm. he's just, he said, I'm going to get 40 t-shirts. I said, you got it, buddy. Aww. Well, that's, that's what I want to say to the audience. You know, if you, if you can, if you can help out, definitely go to tgrahambrown.com and get yourself yeah. a t-shirt because yeah. it is going to a really good cause. And they're hundred percent cotton and you can use them. You know, it's not yeah. like, you know, you actually get some. That's right. And I love that idea. That was a great idea. And we have from small to triple extra large too. So. Which is very important. I know I was selling shirts one time and I never had the bigger sizes. So then I got the bigger sizes, but then I didn't have the smaller sizes. So that's great. You have that all covered. Yeah, we do. Did I tell you that, uh, you know, there are these companies uh, fulfillment companies that a lot of the artists will hire a company and the company will have a huge warehouse and they'll put, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. Billy, let's just use Billy Ray. They might put Billy, have a big place where they have Billy Ray Cyrus's stuff, you know, t-shirts, caps, whatever it is he sells. And then they have all these different artists that, that they fulfill the orders for. And we, the guy we're using, the company we're using and have used for our little, you know, our little website, we don't sell much stuff. I mean, on a day to day basis, we, we don't sell, I bet a hundred dollars a day, not even that much, mm -hmm. but the fulfillment people have had to reorder these shirts. So they said, this is the biggest thing we've ever had. No other artist has had this much. He said, it's unbelievable, especially all at once. He said, this is crazy. So wow. it's a, it, it just morphed into this viral nationwide thing. And we're, so mm -hmm. God's, God's doing it, not me. That's we have, awesome. you know what? We have like five people in our little organization and we're all working. Sheila was sitting in the floor last night putting sizing t-shirts and putting them in envelopes and taking them to the post office and mail them. Oh. I mean, we're doing this ourselves. God bless you. God bless you. Well, I'm definitely going to get a shirt. And and I absolutely love talking with you and I want to bring you on again. You, okay. You're, and, uh, you're well, you know, you know, Scott, you know, Scott. I said, do. Yeah. All you got to do is call him. I'm always at your disposal. So anytime you need anything, if I can help you out, just call me. I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. God You're bless great. you. I feel like I made a new friend. Oh, you did. <laughs> Thank you. Did. Give, give Sheila my love. I and will. guys, just want to remind you to go to tgrahambrown.com. There you can uh, get a lot of information. Your new, you have your music listed there and events. And, go, and, and I was going to say, go to T. Graham Brown Facebook and, and oh, like, you okay. know, start following us on facebook because we keep it up put something different up just about every day and and you can go there and see the details about getting a shirt also okay great and i'm going to put all those links in the description and don't forget on youtube as well to go yeah. to your channel on youtube hey y'all it's t graham brown welcome to my youtube channel you're going to find all kinds of fun things like music videos, concerts, and maybe even some of my commercials. Glad you came. Enjoy yourself. Any final thoughts? Anything you want to share with the viewers? Well, God loves everybody out there, and don't ever forget it. And I know there's some craziness going on right now, but just remember God is still on the throne 24-7, pulling the strings, and everything's going to work out fine. I know that. And and, and God bless you.
and God bless all your listeners and God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much. God bless you and hope to talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. Thank you. It was my honor.